while ago I got my Ancestry DNA results and they were quite interesting at the time. I got uh, mostly British and Irish and then quite a lot of different European. It was about uh, almost all, it was about 28% British and Irish, 28 or 27% um, general like French and German and then all the rest was a mixture of things. What was interesting at the time is I got a, almost 1% Melanesian, almost 1% Native American and a little bit of the um, Caucasus mountains, that sort of area, a little bit more of that and then just generally a lot of European. Then a little bit later they changed the way that they did it so it basically said I was mostly British with a bit of um, Northern Europe and a bit of Irish and then they changed it again and now I'm sort of 50-50. I'm sort of on there I think 58% British and Northern European and the rest is Irish and Scottish which also includes Welsh. So I thought okay now I don't know I'm mainly British obviously ancestrally I know that but what what became of the other tiny percentages I thought. So uh, an opportunity came, came up just over Christmas because uh, the uh, 23andMe DNA was on special offer so I thought I get that. Now I think they might have changed, it's version 5 I think now. I know I've seen all colourful things, colourful things of all the different things that people have. And I've just got my results back. It took a little bit less than a month. I think that's because I've heard that um, 23andMe has just laid off 100 people. So obviously the demand is not amazing. I thought after Christmas it would be, but it's probably not really, really high. So they did it really quickly, which is good on them. Um, I mainly did it for the health. Now the health, I'll tell you now, the health I found out basically, because I was a bit worried because I put the Ancestry one through a thing called Prometheus with an E in the end, which tells you all sorts of health stuff based on that. And there was a lot of things saying, well, this is probably miscalculated because Ancestry doesn't really report this properly. And there's some worrying things. So I thought if I got a 23andMe, then they'll tell me what actually is happening and I won't have to worry. So. It's, it's not going to be like shock horror, I'm just opening it because I've already opened it. I found out basically I don't have any of that really. I've got a, yeah, I've got a chance, a small chance of getting macular de degeneration and Alzheimer's when I get really old. But who hasn't? Some people haven't. And I've got a higher than average chance of getting celiac disease, which I knew because I can't eat wheat. And so that's like, yeah, thanks for telling me that. So basically I'm feeling a little bit like I slightly wasted my money because the ancestry part of it is basically that it's saying it's very blue it's saying 100% uh, uh, Elise 99% uh, 99.9% .9 European that is 78% British and Irish 9% uh, French and German woohoo 1.4% Scandinavians this is more than ancestry is telling me now 11.3% uh, uh, broadly northwestern European and 0.1% unassigned now that is on the 50% um, probability now that's it's basically saying uh, French and German is between 1820 and 1880, Scandinavian between 1830, no, 1730 and 1790 and uh, British and Irish just yeah um, but that's 50%. So you go down and you can actually go to 90%, which is more, you know, 90% true. Now, on other things, like it, on the um, living DNA, when I go to the speculative, it actually tells me more details, in fact. But on this one, it tells me sort of less. On the 90% certain, it's actually only got 27.8% British and Irish. 64.5% broadly Northwestern European, 5.4% broadly other European, and then 2.3% unassigned, which means, we don't know, probably not European. We don't know what it is, so might be, might not be. So now I was curious about this. This is, you know, so that's interesting, I suppose, but I was curious about this. And I have used um, a, a site called uh, DNA Land and GEDmatch or GEDmatch in the past as well. So I thought, so it's, I got the results yesterday, I've already uploaded them to other places to see whether I can get anything else. Now on DNA land, that's just recently, it used to be um, part of a university project and they've just gone um, freelance. So I didn't know that it was still running, but I found out they did. So I re-uploaded my Ancestry one a while ago. This is the DNA land one on Ancestry. 85% Northwest European, 6.4% um, Slavic, 6.2% uh, South Central European, South West European 1.8% and Native American 1.2% which is ambiguously Native American, they can't pinpoint it. So that was on Ancestry. So that's 
1.2% could be part of the, what's that? What's that 2.3%? I don't know, could be that, but that's not 2.3%, was it? Anyway, so I uploaded the 23 and me yesterday and I got an interesting difference in that, in that it said I was only 70% Northwestern European in this, South Central European, which I think is Italy, Greece, that sort of area, is 17%, then Northeast European 6.7%, which would encompass the Slavic in the other one, that's North Slavic 5.5%, Finnish 1.2%, so far so good, but it's also got Ashkenazi Jewish 3.5%, hmm, that's all West Eurasian 97%, so that still leaves 3% more or less unaccounted for, so slightly more. Now what is that unaccounted for 3%? Well, have I still got Native American according to D uh, to 23andMe? Uh, well no, it says ambiguous 1.3, so that could still be, the, it's ambiguous. It's because they do different, they test different parts of your DNA. You've got a lot of DNA and none of these commercial testing companies really, unless you get the whole of your DNA tested, they only do a bit, so it's doing a slightly different bit of my DNA. So ambiguous 1.3. That still leaves 1.4%. If you're good at maths, you'll work that out. 1.4%? What what is that? Well, according to this on DNA land, the 1.4% is Mabuti. Mabuti. See for yourself. Mabuti. What's Mabuti? Well, you may ask. I might shake my booty if you ask me. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, Mabuti is basically um Congo pygmies. Now that would make sense because I've got quite a short family. That would make sense. I've got the genes for shortness. I'm not that short. I'm five foot six, but most of my ancestors, especially on my uh, dad's mother's side and actually my dad's dad's side, are not massively huge people. I would tower over them. So maybe that's interesting. Pygmies. Hmm. Mabuti. Um, so the ambiguous 1.3% it could still be, I might, I've also, I mean, that could be Melanesian. My dad actually had Polynesian when he tested it um, on Ancestry, so, but that's gone away when they did the update. So I have found ancestors that are from New Zealand, um, Maori ancestors from New Zealand, so it's very possible. So now that 1.4% and 1.3% is about the same level as the Scandinavian that it says on uh, 23 and Me. So 23 and Me is, um... Interesting, so 2.3% is slightly more different, so it's only 1.2 unassigned. So I don't know what, what, what really is going on with that, but there's 2.3% of me that could be different things. So I looked on GEDmatch, and um, on GEDmatch they've got one that is uh, called the, um, let's go back to it, They're, they've got one thing here, if I can find it, it's the uh, Eurogenes one, and now Eurogenes, if you're mostly European, is quite a good one, Eurogenes 13. So if I put my new one through Eurogenes 13, they've got a thing called Oracle, where it says what, um, after you've done it. North Atlantic 50.23, so that's probably Western Europe. Baltic 21.05. West Mediterranean, that's, uh, that's Spain really isn't it? Uh, that's 15.37. West Asian 5.35. East Mediterranean 2.85. Red Sea 0 0.84. There's a lovely picture there, you can see it. Uh, East Asian, no South Asian. East Asian 0 0.45. Siberian, no Siberian. I think I've got South Asian on the one that when it's on Ancestry for this. Am Amerindian 2.18%. That's quite high. Oceanic 0 0.10, I think it's slightly higher on the Ancestry one. Northeast African 1.24%, Sub-Saharan African 0 0.34, so that's, that's about, yeah, 1.6% North African and Southeast African. Yeah, that would be right. So maybe it's true. That's interesting. So, yeah, so basically, if you've got unassigned or on 23andMe, I think the thing you should do is to upload it to other places to see whether you've got any more information. Um, Oracle, so I'll just, if you click the Oracle here, see, after you've got that little thing, it goes to Oracle and it tells you what population, so I just did two person Oracle, so it tells you what the main one is and what might be mixed, or if two people, so if you've got two different ancestral strands. So, ah, it says 9.7%. 4% Southwest English, 
with 2.6% Mayan or 2.5% Pima or Caritiana, which are basically uh, all North Amerindian. So that's Native American. And then it goes down maybe different things or maybe part Irish and part Spanish. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. So basically I'm mainly British and Irish, but I've got a lot of European, which I'm quite happy about. A lot of different European, that's not necessary. I'm gonna say the 27% is mainly Welsh with a little bit of Irish and Scottish and the rest of it's everywhere else in the world except for England. Nothing against England, I live in England, I know some lo lovely English people, but I just would like to have some other DNA. Because, to be honest, British DNA is a mix of lots of different things from all around the world. Because before the last Ice Age, there was nobody living here. Oh, by the way, my um, maternal line is H3, which is um, started in Africa, as, as did we all. Went through, and I think that sort of went through to Spain and up through to Northern Europe. So I think that's where that's from. Uh, something like that. Interestingly, I, on my ancestor match, I came up with a cousin, a cousin that I not necessarily talking to anymore, a first cousin who um, has got H instead of H Street, but he is on the maternal side. So I'm thinking he must have had a very, very old one because they, they it does say that if they had um, older kits, they don't always come up with as much. So I've got slightly more detail. So H and H3 is still probably the same. I'm not, I'm not thinking there's any funny business. There's probably no family secrets there, hopefully. Anyway. That's my 23 and me journey. Woo! Excitement. Not really a big shock. Nothing really. But although it's interesting, I I would I would like to keep my because everywhere else says I've got Native American and um, oh actually one of the dead match ones says that Brazilian, which would which would make sense because Brazilian is a, a, a melting pot of of European and African and Native American and maybe a little bit of of um, Oceanic as well. So that'll be fun. And a little bit of Asian. Everything! We are the world. That's fun. I like that. Okay, well that's me done. I'm gonna just think, why did I buy this 23andMe kit? I don't know. I, I was expecting other things to come up, especially with the health results. I'm, I'm relieved, don't get me wrong. I am relieved there's nothing majorly wrong. And it's nice to know that I'm not imagining it. When I eat bread, I feel sick. Yeah, that's probably because, that's fine. I'm slapping this thing, that these noises are just me going boop, boop, boop on this um, chair. Anyway, bye-bye, see you soon. <laughs>